Go, go. Ong kembali. Kah mento ke tempat nak ni tepi ti. Sama nak. Moneng perawitika jun ter nampang sabrinya. Ong kembali. Som kot fuka kot mukol ampi somna som mentai pi beli ada boh. Nampang sabrinya nongka dai kesa semrap be dembung. Jepuh muk ong kembali. Ang yumreh kot mukol kini ta somna ni cika somrum. Tapi orang yang berhenti untuk merajuk le semula som ini dia peniti orang yang berhenti peniti semerajuk penyihir ini le pil cong kroy mereka dah agak sah rabah sah berinya dari bantu ke banjai cimoi sah mitubin nomok nomang dalam dalam kerap tak ini. Jadi betul orang yang sempat dal lebih dika tu nomang sah berinya dan bayi betul kat dah agak sah najis pun mok orang yang berhenti. Sốm ổ côn lục thiên, khi nhóm nâng chi diêm bằng hai anh phó tăng đài miên xả rạp rồi giáo ích ní. Hào ấy nâng bằng hai anh mua là hết, đài nôm ao ấy dương khi nhóm nơi ca giá lai bê nhá đạp phó tăng chi bần tỏ. Sẽ cái đấy thay anh ca rồi bỏ lục khiêu dầm phòn, đài khi nhóm bàn bằng hai anh chun một đo bê ní. Miên ca lược dung chỉ trao anh lược trao anh xa nơi bịa thả. Bốn có bọt, rồi bỏ môn trầy nây rồi bỏ xa thiên nạ rọt khả กูนุยูใบระบอบกะกูมันนี่กำบุจีประชังนั่งบกโกลเตียงลายนี่เตียงอ่อนนี่ปัดหน้าบานชโลบันจังกันแต่ปลื้มจุบ้าไทม์ต
นี่คือจีไอกิซาไม้ขนมจำนอมไอกิซาเตียงไหลได้ทั่วกาปีเพียซาดอยจ่ายกรมลาเวงกาปีสัปดาห์มนอัตบัดมุ้ยระบอกกาไซตากงเปาจดไงตีปลามุ้ยไฮมีเนียชนามจัดสัปดาห์ไอกิซาเลยดีมารอยปลามใบสลักไซสับใบสลักปีอัตบัดมุ้ยระบอกองกาปไซพอเรียนตีเนี่ยเงียซาพอเรียนบารังได้เตร์บานบอกผมสายหลังวิ่งนึกน้องเซวาสายพอเรียนเอฟบีไอเอสไอกระซาเลยดีปีร้อยหกสิบปีจุดบุญนึกน้องวงจออีเบย์สละมาร้อยมาเพย์ตรองเลยอีออันอังเลโซนโซนดับประมุยหกสับใบดับมุยนึ่งจีจงกรอยนึกน้องเราใบกาเราบอสเซวาสายปอร์เมียนบอร์เตจีมุยขี้เนื้อดอดไดไอกซาเลกดีปีรอยหกสับปีจุดบุญอีใบอีสละอีใบสละมรอยมาเพย์ตรองเลกอังเลกอีออันโซนโซนดับประมุยหกสับใบจัดสับบุญขมายอีออันโซนโซนจัดสับโซนปีหาสับใบบารังอีออันโซนโซนจัดสับโซนปีมาเพย์ประมุนกาบไซปอร์เมียนมุยระบอสิกได้ประกาศปอร์เมียนอ่านดอยคิวสมพรกาปิดไงตีมาเพย์ปรามไทยมิเนียชนามจัดสับปรามแต่บ้านทลายท่าอัตเพียบในปุกกบัดปรามปลเนี่ตรีไตบังจับตัวตรีจำนายอ๋อปันมันก่อดอยไอเลนี่ตลอดบอกมือสิกได้ทลายกาจีสาธีนักวิ่งมาดองขยมส้มน้อมอ๋อลูกลูกใส่จากรอมบอกมือสิกได้ดอกสองเชิงปีรบใบกาบุยรบเซวาสายปอร์เมียนขนมไข่มีเนื้อชนะมุยปอนปรามบุญรอยเจ็ดสับปรามไอกระซาเลกดีปีรอยหกสับปีจอยบุญอีใบสลามมารอยมาเพย์เนื้อขนมไอกระซานี่มีอัตบัตสิกได้อัมเปียวเนียวมวยเทเราบอกคิวสมพรได้บ้านเจงกาปิทไงตีดับปรามใครมีเนียชนามจัดสับปรามเราบอกกอดอัมพิวเนียวตึกดอลเปรซังจุนรูมจีดหนึ่งจุนบอร์เตได้เมียนตีดมเนื้อเนื้อกรองนมปิงเนื้อตามตีกรองดอเตียตอัตบอดนี่จีพีซาอังเล่เนื้อขนมไอกิซาอีออันโซนโซนดับปรามวยหกสับปรามใบมาเพยปรามวยเราโฮตตอนมาเพย์ผมใบพิซซ่าขมายเนื้อขนมอีออนโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีสามสับมุ้ยตอนอีออนโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีหาสับปรามหนึ่งพิซซ่าบารังเนื้อขนมเล็กอีออนโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีมาเพย์บุ้นตอนปีร้อยสามสาจิตทำไมมันร้องเตี้ยไอ้กระซานี่บังไห้หน่อยเคยท่าขนมจำน้องมาไว้เอาไว้เตี้ยจีจราจรกู้เมียนกาดังลื้อเราบอกคิวสมพรยางลมอัดอัมพีสับเพียบกาเนื้อตามสมอรภูมิเนียเนียเนื้อขนมดำบอลเซิงเซิงในประเทศกัมพูชีไอกษานี้บังไห้ถ้าคิวสมพรบานปลากาอัมพีเอเนียวนี่ดำไปอ้อยโปรจีจุนเงือบล้างรูปรูมจีมวยหนึ่งกองกำลังขมายกระหอมปดูลมลมเราบอกซาเทียนนารอดโดยเชื่อสิ่งใดทลายกามุนมวยจมนวนได้ขยมบานอันโดยชนะได้กาอัมเปียวนิวพอดอลนกาโยดังปีเจตนาเราบอปะกุมณีกัมพูชีเนเปียดเดลตีกรองบานดูระลมคิวสมพรกอดบานในยีธาดอยขมิ้นตุนเลเมกงทวิกาตีหินเสรออังกอหนึ่งจมนุยมกปีกระอือหอยปังไอใต้เตลือจมนุยดอกติดตุยนุปุ่ยชวนกบฏเชี่ยเตียงนุกัมปงเตลือบานเกทเวออยซอเชียมบันติดมาดองบันติดมาดองบุญชวนกบฏเตียงนู่ดังจะบ้าท่าเวียสนาเราบอกบุเกบานบอกดอลตีบันจอบหอยบุญจะกบฏอเมริกได้เจียจาวัยเราบอกบุเกนู่บานดังเรื่องนี้จะบ้านนะปิภพโลกก็บานดังได้บกลึกสถานทูตอันตรจิตอังกาอันตรจิตนี่นี้เนี่ยซาลปอร์เมียนหนึ่งชวนบอร์เตียงลายบานนังกำปงจมเลียกล้วนเชิงปีพนมปิงหอยพวกเนี่ยเมียนรบเมื่อเนี่ยก็บานเพียรครูนเจงปีกรองพนมปิงได
ดยชนะสถานการณ์รบกมังคืออสังคมแตงสงขยมสูบบางไฮไอกาตียนไงปัดปลดในสังเครียมสีเวลคิวสมพรบานจิงซาเนเนียบันไทมเตียตกันปรจีจุนรัวเนตีกรงก็ดยจีกองกำลังซาเทนารอดขมายซาแตงนี่เมียนเนคโนระบายกาเนคไคเมซาชนะมจัดสปรัมไอกาซาเล็กดีปีรอยหกสปีจดปรัมอีสบายสลาหมรอยดับปรัมบายสิกได้ชายการะบอกคิวสมพรเนทไงตีปีไคเมซาชนะมจัดสปรัมเดลกีไอโรเคยเนคโนอีออันโซนโซนดับปรัมมวยหกสปรัมบายกายสปรัมปีจีพิซาอังเลอีออันโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีหกปรมปีพิเศษาขมายอีออันโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีหาสับปรมมวยพิเศษาบารังกาอัมเปียวเนียวจงกล่าวไอ้มวยจกทั้งไอ้ที่ดับใบไข่เมษาเจ็ดสับปรมแต่บ้านเจนเนอมุนกาดูรอลุ่มในตีกรองขนมปิ้งเกี่ยไอ้เราเคยเนื้อขนมไอ้กระซาโดยเนียนในตรังอีออันโซนโซนดับประมุยหกสประบุญสายสัประบายจีพีซาอังเลอีออันโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีเจ็ดสัประมุยจีพีซาขมายหนึ่งอีออันโซนโซนเจ็ดสับโซนปีหกสับจีพีซาบารังลูกปฐียนมุนหนึ่งขยมจูนวิติการนี่ติดดอจะหักการไรดอกขยมขยมทวีขยมส้มทวีการกัดสมกอลหนึ่งรอไอกษาแต่กายาไลสหประเทศนี้บานจูนอันบังนี่คือวิอาจเมียนปรยอยเฮาหนึ่งการรีบรอบพองได้อัมพีสกรรมเพียบซาเทนะเนียนี่จีจราอันเซิงติดได้ลูกคิวสมพรบานเพลังนงฐานะจีมีดักน้อมจวนขั้วในปะกุมนี่กัมพูชีรัฐาปิบารูปรวมจีดนึ่งระนาเซรูปรวมเจียกัมพูชีไอกระซาแตงนี่ส้มบรรจุนหอยส้มดักจับปีปีนี้ต่อเติร์สส้มลูกปทินมิตาปินัดส้มออกกลออกกลมาส้มจุนที่มาต่อนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนายประธานและนาย With your, with your leave. Um, the first document uh, that I would like to uh, briefly discuss uh, is a book published by Kyu Sampan. Uh, it is called uh, Kyu, uh, Cambodia's Recent History and Reasons for the Decisions that Are Made. Uh, it is E3/18. It has been um, uh, put, been put before the chamber by owners. Um, the original document number was introductory submission 4.23. This book is relevant, obviously, uh, because it deals with numerous matters. Uh, it has been referred to in court, uh, so we will only take you to uh, particular passages that we think are relevant both for the purposes of the chamber and the public. More broadly, um, it deals with Kyu Sampan's life. In the pre-75 period, it also deals with the 75 to 79 period, as well as, uh, to a lesser extent, uh, events following the 1979 period or the DK period. Um, first, I would like to take you, and I should note that the pre-75 period is, is dealt with in chapters one to six. I would first like to take you to a passage uh, which appears at Khmer ERN 001083820, uh, English ERN 001083733, and French ERN 0039 This passage uh, deals with the uh, 
flight by Kisampan from Phnom Penh. Um, I'm showing the Khmer versions where available for the, for the benefit of counsel and, and the accused. And I will, rather than read the entire passages, um, I'll leave that to all the parties. And I might just read um, segments that, that we consider particularly relevant. Um, so in relation to the, the departure, Kyu Sampan indicates that he had received a proposal uh, by way of a letter, which included, in his words, a detailed analysis of the situation, leaving no room for doubt as to who sent it. It doesn't describe who the author is, but describes the letter. He says, the messenger who delivered the letter was well known to both of us. This is to Kyu Sampan and uh, his friend Hu Yun. And I, I continue to Quote, he was a man respected for his age and his comportment. He often attended meetings organized by the Association of Former Students of Sisawak High School, a group to which we also belong. So this was the person who had made contact with Ki Sampan and delivered the letter in response to which, uh, according to the book, he and Hu Yun fled Phnom Penh um, and, and uh, then found themselves under the protection of the Khmer Rouge. Um, I should, for, for the sake of completeness, I should indicate in this passage he also indicates that he left Phnom Penh in early 1967 because he was forced to do so. And it was not his decision to leave his parliamentary duties and join the revolution. Um, moving on to another passage, um, which is an insight into uh, Q. Sampan's observations in this period of the movement he had joined, uh, or whose protection he had sought and, and uh, attained. This is at Khmer ERN 00103824, French ERN 00395402, and English ERN 00103737. And I should note, I'm giving uh, only the starting ERNs in some cases, these, um, these passages along with the page. Um, uh, this, uh, this passage, Q. Sampan reflects on what he saw in 1967 when he uh, was in the southwest zone under the protection of Tamok. And he says, so this is the gist of what I saw, what I heard, and how I felt when I was first introduced to the Khmer Rouge movement. It is sad, but also exhilarating. And then a little bit further down, I was excited because I was seeing a new force, a real national force, taking root in the hearts of the farmers living in the countryside, at a time when there were signs that our country was headed for disaster. Moving on to yet another passage, um, and this is a, a, a caption uh, that is found below a photograph. This is at ERN. Uh, in Khmer ERN 0013825, French ERN 00395404, and English ERN 0013738. The reason we show this is because it is a sort of reflection by Mr. Q. Sampan as to perhaps the conundrum he, he seems to be facing or dealing with of uh, what one might do when there's a clash between human rights and the sovereignty of his or her nation. And I'll read uh, again the passages on the screen. I will read uh, a part of it. And he says, can one be true to the principles of respect for human rights and defense of one's homeland at the same time when it, when it happens that the two principles contradict each other? At the end of that passage, he says, I still profoundly agree with my orientation of life that the defense of one's country's independence and sovereignty is always and ever legitimate and necessary. The reason we read this passage, Your Honor, because in our submission, it relates to Q. Sampan's attitude, perhaps, to resolving what he sees as a conflict between his country's sovereignty and respect for human rights. I will note uh, in passing that at Khmer ERN 00103826, French ERN 00395406, and English ERN 00037391, Q. Sampan describes an attack uh, which took place in Trapang Kralung district, uh, which he was uh, invited to, uh, to attend and witness. This was an attack, uh, by his account, by Khmer Rouge forces on a Khmer Republic garrison. 
uh, and he described at, the, at those ERNs his um, ability to view that attack and, and his happiness at what he was witnessing. Um, I will also just briefly note uh, for this period, 1968-1969, of course, your honours have heard evidence already uh, of the um, uprising, which, which uh, the evidence indicates the Khmer Rouge had commenced at that stage. Um, uh, Q Sampan describes the situation in which that uprising took place in, in more detail um, at Khmer ERN 00103828, French ERN 00395408, and English ERN 00103741, uh, and, and, and those sections, as I say, as I indicated, continue uh, to describe the uprising, the conditions in which the uprising took place. Um, and lastly, they also describe uh, Q Sam Khan's move to Mount Ol in 1969 uh, with Hu Yun and Hu Nim, um, where he uh, essentially, I believe, was stationed um, at Tamo headquarters for the Southwest Zone. The next significant event which Q Sam Khan describes is his meeting with Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia um, in 1970. And this is found at the Khmer ERN 0010330, French ERN 00395412, and English ERN 0010342. Uh, if we could show that on the screen, I don't propose to read the entire uh, passage in the interest of time, uh, other than to indicate that um, he describes uh, being taken to a meeting point uh, by Tamok uh, and also being accompanied by Hu Yun, Hu Nim and another individual um, to a point where they met uh, Nun Chia and Pol Pot. What I wish to um, highlight here is that the words, at least in English, uh, this is where we met Salot Sa and Nguyen Chia for the first time. And I'll just make a brief pause here. This meeting, uh, according to uh, Q Sampan's OCRJ interview, took place in September 1970. Uh, that is several months after the March uh, 1970 appeal that was issued by uh, then Prince um, and which, uh, again, according to Q Sampan's own statements, was issued following consultations between uh, Pol Pot um, and the then Prince. And those consultations, of course, took, took place via um, an intermediary, the, the Premier of, of, of China. Mr. Zhu Enlai at the time. The reason I, I, I make this point is because Q Sampan suggests he met uh, Salaf Sa or Pol Pot for the first time in late 1970, and yet several months earlier, of course, um, the appeal had been issued, and, he, and it had been issued um, in part with his uh, name attached to it on behalf of the res resistance in the country. The next uh, passage is at Khmer ERN. 00103832, French ERN 00395417, and English ERN 00103745. And in this passage, Q Sampan elaborates on an open letter which he had, which he had published uh, addressing and, and which he had addressed to the people of Cambodia. Um, this is found in Chapter 6 of the book, uh, which, is, which is entitled, Why did I agree to represent the resistance inside the country? And he says, and I quote, I wrote that the CPK appeared as the only valid source, force to lead the struggle in the field. By valid force, I mean independent force, one that fights for the sovereignty of that country without depending on some foreign force for assistance. And a little bit further down, he says, from that point of view, I was dictated by my conscience. And we submit that's relevant uh, for the purposes of uh, considering uh, the reasons that Khi Sampan joined the Khmer Rouge movement and agreed to be one of the leaders. The next uh, event to which I wish to take your honours, which is dealt with in the books, is the 1971 Congress uh, of the CPK, which Khi Sampan indicates he attended. I shall slow down. 
This is found at Khmer ERN double French ERN double o three nine five four seven eight and English ERN double o one zero three seven seven five. This is in Chapter Eleven. Uh, which is entitled Reflection on the Khmer Rouge Movement Based on My Experience. He's a reflection, reflections on the regime that he joined. Uh, and he indicates that uh, this uh, Congress in the middle of 1971 was held, uh, this was the first Congress since 1960, and it was held in the North Zone, which was then controlled by the Khmer Rouge. Um, and what is of interest here, if we can just have that on the screen very briefly, um, is a quote of a speech by Pol Pot uh, given at that, uh, at that meeting, where Pol Pot is uh, quoted by Kyu Sampan to have said, the weakness of the working class in Cambodia does not mean that there are no class distinctions or class struggles in our country. Pol Pot then goes on to, to uh, elaborate on that, on that class struggle, but we will move on to another passage which illustrates, in our view, what this struggle is all about. That next passage is at Khmer ERN 0010-03870, French ERN 0039-479, and English ERN 0010-03776. And in this uh, part, which is of particular interest, uh, Q Sampan develops, develops a theme of a contradiction or struggle between the cities and the countryside. And he also makes reference to the use of uh, the so-called defense units by the Khmer Rouge. In our submission, this uh, evidences Q Sampan's contemporaneous knowledge uh, of these uh, events, and, and, uh, uh, and that will become apparent from the passage I will read. He says that following the 1971 Congress, and I quote now, I learned from various internal party documents and from the stories of various zone or region leaders that the daily social conflicts in the cities as well as in the countryside, though seemingly minor, were actually breeding grounds for the CPK to train leaders to work in various types of mass organizations. But the movement soon revealed itself to be far more vulnerable in the cities than in the countryside. And then he goes on to say, according to the documents he read, quote, the enemy's repression machine is more sophisticated there, where workers are often tarnished by capitalism, whereas the countryside is wider and more protected from it. In the same passage, he goes on to describe the, the shaping of the first self-defense units by the Khmer Rouge. And he says, in some regions, the local authorities' secret agents who were caught spying on important party meetings were sometimes tied up and physically eliminated. One remembers the role played by these self-defense units in the 1968 capture of weapons from Long Nol's depots and in the guerrilla war that followed. And your honors will recall that earlier I described a, an attack on such a depot which Q Sampan, by his own account, witnessed in 1968. Uh, another thing which Q Sampan deals with is the relationship or conflict, as he describes it, between the cadre, CPK cadre, who had spent time in Hanoi uh, and the CPK cadre who had been stationed in Cambodia throughout this period. This is a Khmer ERN 00103870, French ERN 00395481, and English ERN 00103776. Now, I want to be fair to the accused here, and I want to indicate that there is a discrepancy between the English and French versions on the one side, on the one hand, and the Khmer version on the other hand, uh, in this passage. So I'm going to read from an English uh, passage, but um, where, uh, as I said, I wish to indicate that there is some discrepancy with the Khmer language, um, and, and perhaps uh, we will try and clarify that in the days to come. Um, what, what Mr. Q. Sampan says here, is, and I quote, another point merits mention. Very early after the 1970 coup, a rivalry developed between military leaders from the 1968 to 70 armed battle on the one side and from Vietnam on the other. 
And then he goes on to say, from my position, I did not notice any systematic elimination. In the rare cases I heard about in informal conversations, I thought the offending parties were simply pulled aside or sent to the villages to, quote, learn closer to the people, such as what happened during those years to members of the Khmer National Un Union Front who had recently returned from Beijing. The reason I make reference to this uh, passage is because other evidence on the case file uh, indicates that um, re returnees from Hanoi, the Khmer Rouge cadre who had returned from Hanoi, were in any cases executed by the CPK. Uh, and just one uh, such uh, item is, is uh, Philip Short's book, which is based on interviews with uh, CPK cadre. Uh, and this is at ERN 0039 Another theme which Q Sampan deals with in this book, and the final theme that I will deal with just for, um, as, as uh, I'm going through the book, is the use of cooperatives in the zones controlled by the Khmer Rouge. Uh, in the period prior to 1975. Uh, at the same ERNs I quoted earlier, for the last passage, Q Sampan continues, quote, finally, the decision to form peasant cooperatives in the liberated zones at the end of 1971 and in early 1972, long before the Khmer Rouge's victory, also greatly affected the movement. He goes on to say, these cooperatives were deemed critical. Indeed, while giving the, the Khmer Rouge leadership control over the economy, in particular the production of rice, these cooperatives were also an indispensable source of power. Independent from the Vietnamese communists, they could be easily mobilized after the Vietnam War spilled over the Cambodian border. Without such measures, the Khmer Rouge destiny would have forever been linked to the events inside Vietnam. Vietnam. And this is again Q Sampan discussing Which cooperatives some four years prior to the, um, April 1975 uh, He then goes on to describe an accelerated use of cooperatives throughout the country. This is at Khmer ERN 0010387. French ERN 0039584 and English ERN 0010387. Seven, seven, um, I should again, to be fair to the accused, he describe him, describes himself as a fellow traveller, not a man of the party. So, in his own words, he is not uh, giving this, uh, these accounts as someone who is a, ma a man of the party. Of course, we disagree strongly at this point, but I wish to be fair to him. And I'll quote one passage here. It is essential to remember that the movement's independence vis-à-vis -vis the North Vietnamese and the United States, who were both fighting on Cambodian soil, was based on agricultural collectivization at the end of 1971 and in early 1972, and on the grain requisitioning measures throughout the so-called, quote, high-level cooperatives. In regions under the regime's control, Pol Pot saw in this a mechanism to mobilize all forces, human, economic, and ideological, to end the war. Again, uh, we consider this highly probative because it indicates the pervasive uh, use of cooperatives throughout the uh, areas controlled by the Khmer Rouge. Of course, at a time where Q uh, Sang Pan and our submission was. Uh, one of the leaders of, of the movement. Um, I will now take you to another document, um, and uh, I will spare you long passages now. This is just a brief uh, passing reference. Um, this is a New York Times article. Um, it is dated the 9th of July, 1982, and the document number here is D56-DOC 252 at Khmer ERN 0065-187, French ERN 0062-450, and English ERN 0012-2280. Q Sampan is reported to have said, to have indicated 
that he had indeed taken part in the decision to evacuate Phnom Penh. And I, and I will quote, and he acknowledged that millions of Cambodians had been sent out of Phnom Penh and into the countryside as a result of, of quote, a collective decision. Had he joined in the decision question mark? Mr. Q. Sampan chuckled dryly and replied in French, yes, evidently. And I don't think this document requires any comment in particular, so I'll move on to the next one, which is um, document number E3 slash 116. It has been put before your honours. Uh, this is a uh, document dated the 9th of se September 1972, uh, and it ties in with uh, the submissions of, of my colleague earlier. This is another appeal by Kisan Pan, but now issued three years earlier to the appeals that my colleague was quoting from. Um, and this appeal in our submission is relevant because it demonstrates the Q. Sampan's uh, public uh, responsibilities as a Minister of Defence uh, at that time, and also his knowledge of the dire humanitarian situation in Phnom Penh as early as 1972. And I'll quote briefly uh, here, this is uh, Khmer ERN 3067 French ERN 0485 505, and English ERN 0485282. Uh, and perhaps we can have that document on the screen. I think we're just waiting in the AD unit. I'm going to read a part of that passage. It says, our Khmer People's National Liberation Armed Forces are intensifying attacks against all targets, especially along the strategic route numbers 1, 2 and 5. Our forces are besieging, besieging Phnom Penh and isolating the city from other places, causing the enemy's last stronghold in a panic-stricken state. Therefore, they are severely defeated militarily. Worse than this, their stocked rice is not available now. Concerning the rice issue, I would like to inform monks, public servants, soldiers and civilians that it is obvious that there is no single grain of rice now and in the future. Hugh Sampan describing the situation in Phnom Penh in 1972. Uh, I won't read any more from that document. Uh, it is there for your honours and for the parties to, to, to look at, but for the benefit of the public, I'll just indicate it ends with an appeal to monks and others living under the Khmer Republic regime to attack rice and food warehouses. Um, and uh, to um, use their solidarity um, with the Khmer Rouge. And it closes, and I'll just read the last sentence, please monks and you my patriots rise up to smash the enemy. Um, another document from the same period, uh, this time January 19, it appears to be a January 1973 document, and perhaps my colleague can just show the first page of this, of this publication. It is not dated as far as we can ascertain, but the text of the document seems to indicate that it was uh, published in or around mid-January 1973. We could just show that first page. Um, this was issued at a time of, of uh, peace negotiations between the United States and Vietnam, and, and, and the document makes reference to it. It is a public statement issued by Q. Sampan together with, uh, in, in his uh, capacity, I should say, as the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Defence of Grunt, and also by Mr. Hu Yun, who was Minister of Interior, and Mr. Hu Nim, who was Ministry, uh, Minister of Propaganda and Information. Um, uh, in our submission, and Your Honours uh, will read the document, of course, um, it, it shows his detailed knowledge uh, of the battlefield situation. It goes into several pages, uh, detailed discussions of, of uh, military victories by Khmer Rouge forces. It, in fact, boasts as to the smashing of enemy heads at various front lines, including National Road 3, 
National Road 5, around Phnom Penh, uh, around the Mekong, south of the capital, uh, and in the north at Siem Reap in Kampong Tong. At paragraph 7, this document boasts that by mid-January 1973, the Kampuchean People's Liberation Army had smashed a total of 10,245 heads of enemies and liberated dozens of bases, Mekong River, and tens of thousands of people. I'll give two specific examples of what we say is contemporaneous knowledge of the brutality of the Khmer Rouge forces by Kisan at Khmer ERN 00442329, French ERN 00752171, and English ERN 00740933, Kisampan suggests and his co-authors. On the other hand, in the Stay Prey battlefield along National Road 2 alone, we have smashed, smashed 10 enemies' strategic villages, 11 bridges, and injured or killed 300 enemies, including a captain, and 300 households have been liberated. Um, I won't quote from that document anymore. We have limited for time. But again, I'll just note that, it, 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 like the other documents, it boasts the cutting off of uh, supplies to Phnom Penh uh, by Khmer Rouge forces. Uh, the next document uh, has, in fact, been discussed in court um, so, again, in the interest of time, I will be very brief. Uh, I believe Judge Laverne referred to this document towards the end of last week. It is entitled Nouvelle du Cambodge. Uh, it is an April 1974 issue uh, by the Kampuchea Information Agency. Uh, this is document number 12, uh, introductory submission 12.7. It basically reports the activities of a delegation uh, led by Q Sampan, uh, a delegation which included uh, Ying Sari, who was then described as a special advisor to the vice presidency of the royal government, and Ying Tirith, who was described as minister for the people's education and youth. Um, because the document has been discussed uh, in accordance with your honours, um, instructions. I, I won't uh, read from it. Uh, I will simply indicate two uh, particular places that we consider relevant. Um, uh, the document first includes a joint statement issued by the Korean hosts and the Cambodian visitors. Um, and an excerpt that we're particularly interested in is at Khmer ERN 00596125, French ERN S. 00000112 and English ERN 00280576. This again indicates uh, knowledge of violent attacks on Phnom Penh and a few remaining uh, strongholds uh, of the Khmer Rouge regime. Um, this document also includes a speech by Ki San San, um, which I think uh, Judge Laverne quoted from last week or referred to last week, it discusses the, um, uh, as the Khmer Rouge described it, liberation of Udon in March 1974. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 00596141. French ERN S00000122 and English ERN 00280586. Um, reason we make reference to this in particular is because other evidence in the case file indicates that extensive crimes were committed uh, during the Khmer Rouge's uh, attack um, on Udong. Uh, and again, uh, other evidence in the case file describes the events there, including uh, cadres uh, interviewed by Philip Short, uh, one of whom will testify before your eyes. Um, and in Philip Short's book, this is that those events are described as at 00396455 and 00396465. Those passages are only available in English at the moment. Long book, and uh, we will try and uh, obtain translations of the relevant portions. Sir, when you are, what 
nam nào thay về nhà ta chết đời như vậy lươn hay chỉ về xe lấy yêu ăn lươn về lấy xong về chạy thà làng vĩnh trong nội trong còi bánh bánh đi Yes, thank you, Mr. President, and I apologise to everyone in the courtroom and so much as I look particular. Um, uh, those ERNs from Philip Short's book were 00396455 and 00396465. Uh, I'll move on to Another document, this is document number six uh, that, I'm, that I'm presenting today. Um, it is a interview of Q Sampan by uh, two individuals, Meng Trai Ia and Sapir Lung. This is on the case file E3 slash 108, has been put before your honours. Um, and this is we submit this document is highly probative. It contains comments by Q Sampan about numerous aspects of CPK policy prior to 1975. It deals with the reasons for the evacuations um, and it deals with the functioning of the standing in the Central Committee, among other matters. Uh, I should say this also uh, contains an interview of Nun Chia by the same authors. Um, again, I wish to be uh, very clear. Um, there are sometimes issues with uh, translation of passages. Uh, we have requested a correction uh, or a review by the translation unit of one page of this document in Khmer. The English is the original. Um, so I will, I will quote from the English version, and that's the version we will show on the screen. Uh, and the correction in Khmer should hopefully come through uh, very soon if it only relates to one brief passage. Otherwise, we didn't identify any major errors. Um, at Khmer ERN 00347033, French ERN 00613202, and English ERN 00000926. Kusampan deals with the uh, return to Cambodia uh, by Pol Pot in 1953. Uh, this was at a time when Khi Sang Khan had gone to France to undertake further studies, and at the same time Pol Pot had returned to Cambodia uh, to essentially uh, according to this account, um, investigate or look into the various uh, resistance movements and report back to the student association on who they should join their forces with, as it were. Um, and I mention this simply because in our submission it, it indicates uh, Kyu San Pan's early knowledge of who, Kyu, of who Pol Pot was and what he was doing. Uh, and I will just note that earlier when I was quoting from uh, Kyu San Pan's book, uh, he had indicated there that he met uh, Pol Pot for the first time um, uh, in 1970. And this, this, of course, uh, in our submission, uh, is inconsistent with other evidence on the case file, which indicates that he was well aware of Pol Pot's role in the Communist Party, um, as I say, as early as 1953. I will read from that passage very briefly. At that time, South Sa, me and others were students in France. I went to France in 1953. South Sa was assigned to come to make a judgment which group should the students involve. South Sa came and decided to involve with the Khmer Viet Minh movement supported by Vietnam. We decided to join South Sa to support the Viet Minh movement fighting against France. Uh, again, another passage in the same interview um, deals with the, uh, the theme of cooperatives, again, prior to 1975. Um, and what's interesting here is that Kyu Sampan indicates that one of the reasons that the population of Phnom Penh had swelled to 3 million was because there were escaping Khmer Rouge cooperatives. This is at Khmer ERN 00347036, French ERN 00. 
613203 and English ERN 0000928. Kisampan says, and I quote, in 1975, there were as many as 3 million people lived in Phnom Penh. These people moved first to escape the U.S. bombings and cooperative in the Khmer Rouge-controlled areas. But why there were cooperatives, he asks, and goes on to say, it was because at that time the Vietnamese tried to buy rice from the Long Nol government and later Cambodian people. Then we started to create cooperatives to make sure that everybody had enough rice to eat. On the same page, if we could show that page on the screen, Q uh, Sampan was asked whether there were any CIA spies in Cambodia in this period, pre-75. And he answers, CIA were everywhere during the war. According to World Health Organization, there were 15,000 people died of starvation five months before April 17, 1975. What would you do if you were there? Question mark. There were meetings in the standing committee to deal with these problems. The reason this is prohibitive in our opinion, in our submission, is because it indicates that discussions took place, of course, prior to the evacuation of Phnom Penh to deal with the problem of the city's population. I should indicate that in the same interview, uh, Q Sampan uh, names the members of the Standing Committee uh, of the CPK to include Pol Pot as Secretary, Nun Chia as Deputy Secretary, Ying Sari as a member, uh, Son Sen, Tamok, Von Vet, and Sao Pim. And at Khmer ERN 0347037, French ERN 0061320 and English ERN 0000929. After identifying those members of the standing committee, he is asked, is Vaughan Vet still alive? He responds, he was arrested because he also was one of the Viet Minh bodies hidden in the Communist Party of Kampuchea. Similarly, Sao Pim was also arrested for the same reason. One last reference in that document at Khmer ERN 0034703039, French ERN 0061320. 205 and English ERN 0000929. Uh, Hugh Sampan canvases, according to the interview, the concept uh, or need for radical policies. And he says, I completely agree that at that time we had committed mistakes. At the same time, we also did many good things for our nation. So it is fair to talk both good and bad. Stop talking only about the killings, which is only one side of the coin. If you want your country to gain independence and free, you have to dedicate something for your nation. People may not have so much freedom. Political leaders have to practice radical policy. And I'll leave this document there. The next set of documents, uh, number seven on my list, uh, from which I will not quote, but to which I will simply refer, are a series of interviews with um, uh, an individual called Sam Burin, and these documents are found at D297.11 through to D297.15. Uh, these are relevant simply because, again, they deal with Ki San Pan's life prior to 1975. I do wish to note that we also have a more complete version of these interviews, um, and we submitted them with our uh, document list. Uh, both in April and in July. This document uh, hasn't been allocated a number just as yet by the chamber, but it is document number 207, uh, 
in Annex 1 of our April and July list. The July list is E109-4.1, and then there are a number of annexes to that list. The next document uh, which I wish to deal with, and I will provide perhaps two quotes or three in the time that is remaining, and then uh, perhaps I can resume in the morning, Your Honours, is Q. Sampan's, again, another book by Q. Sampan, uh, entitled Considerations on the History of Cambodia from the Early Stage to the Period of Democratic Kampuchea. This is, uh, uh, has been placed before, Your Honours. It is E3 slash 16. It is a very long document. Uh, we uh, consider Chapter 5 in particular to be extremely relevant because it deals with the uh, development of, of the CPK and their policies with the various individuals and their roles in the pre-75 period. Um, perhaps by way of introducing this document, uh, I should read from the very opening lines of Chapter 5, where Q. Sampan says, However, we should also ponder whether a revolution like the Khmer Rouge Revolution that had once broken the greedy ambitions of major and intermediate great powers could have been an act committed by a single person or a small group of people. That certainly could not be true. Many tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of people followed this revolution, and they did not hesitate to sacrifice their lives for the revolutionary cause. The reason we say this is important is because it reflects Hugh Sampan's views on the Khmer Rouge movement and also on the concept that, of course, uh, it was a collective movement. It was not ruled by one person, or in Kyu Sampan's words, a small group of people. At um, another passage which uh, I wish to refer to briefly, Kyu Sampan discusses the use of criticism and self-criticism, which is, of course, a hallmark uh, of, uh, of um, CPK policies as early as late 1950s. This is as at Khmer ERN 00380262, French ERN 00643831, and English ERN 00498229. And Q. Sampan states the following. On the organizational side, the fundamental units were the branches, each of which had just three to six persons with iron discipline, which all voluntarily accepted, and which had to do constant criticism and self-criticism to strengthen and expand their proletarian stances. He then says in brackets, Later, these words were used to educate me too. I wish to use them at this time so that you can see the atmosphere inside the movement at that time. I will move on to another passage. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 00380267, French ERN 00643834. Eight three four and Khmer ERN. Sorry, I apologize. English ERN zero zero four nine eight two three one. Um, this is important in our submission because it deals with the party lines adopted at the very first Congress of the Communist uh, Party held in Phnom Penh, uh, as Q. Sampan indicates, between the thirtieth of September and the second of October, nineteen sixty. He points, uh, he highlights in particular a new line of the party adopted at that uh, Congress uh, under item D on that page, and he says, this line specified that the exploiting classes were the primary enemy of the Cambodian Revolution and the tools of the American imperialists. Thus, the Cambodian people had to smash the feudalist regime, whether by peaceful methods or by other means. Uh, Your Honours, I'm mindful of the time. It's 4 p.m. now. I would need about another 10 minutes to finish 
this document. Um, and then I could, uh, the next segment is, is, a, is a number of brief video clips. Uh, I can either finish this document now or in the morning, whichever your honours uh, prefer. I'm very grateful, Your Honours, and I'm mindful that it's been a long day. Um, so I will uh, complete uh, this document in the 10 minutes that I have. Um, the next uh, section is of interest because it deals with the, uh, the stance of independence, mastery and self-reliance. This is uh, in the very early period um, and the use of covert guard units to which I've already made reference in another document earlier. This is at Khmer ERN 0038037 French ERN 00643836 and English ERN 00498233. Discussing those um, units, uh, Kisampan says the following, quote, any sub-district chief, any deputy clerk, any forestry chief, any fishery ministry officer that was the most vicious, they would arrest and kill. And further down, and they struggled to defend one another against campaigns of arrest and helped hide one another so that the power holders could not arrest them. They even organized covert guards that used only kerchiefs, cattle ties, knives, hatchets and clubs as weapons to capture anyone who dared sneak into the villages to listen to the meetings of the peasants or the meetings of the cadre. Uh, of course, numerous other documents discuss these, these uh, covert guards, including, I believe, the revolutionary flag of December 1976 to January 1977. Uh, but I shall move on to um, another uh, segment. This is found at English ERN, rather, I'll start with Khmer, at the Khmer ERN 00380390, French 00643847, and English 00498243. This passage is of interest because it discusses a meeting conducted by Pol Pot at Office 100, um, which I believe was on the Vietnamese territory in 19, 1966. Um, this was a meeting at which uh, a decision was made to prepare for armed struggle, um, and uh, Kyu San Pan summarizes the, these resolutions. Uh, but importantly, uh, number three, he says, the most important decision of all was that each zone was to make ready to join in armed struggle. Uh, in our submission, the relevance of this, of course, is that centralized decision making by the CPK highest uh, echelons, which then, of course, are implemented by uh, each zone, in the words of um, and last, uh, the last passage from this book uh, to which I want to refer um, relates again to those events of March 1970 uh, following the coup d'etat um, and it revolves around the issuance of a public appeal by the then Prince Norodom Sihanouk. Uh, this is at Khmer ERN 0038 French ERN 00643864, and English ERN 00498254. Uh, here, Q Sampan describes uh, the um, 
essentially communication between Norod Omsiano and Pol Pot with Zhu Enlai, as I mentioned earlier, acting as an intermediary. And Khi Sang Pan confirms that in that communication, Pol Pot sent a letter of support to uh, the prince, which was signed in the name of Khi Sang Pan, and Mim. All of whom most Cambodians assumed had died at the orders of Sihanouk three years earlier. Um, again, this is relevant in our submission because it forms part of the fa factual matrix as to just what was happening in early 1970 and how those communications uh, took place and how Q San Pan was put forward as the leader of the resistance in the country. Um, lastly, I note that I have about three minutes left, um, and I will just use that time to refer to document number nine, from which I will not, not uh, quote, uh, because it is uh, the foyer runners, you're well familiar with it, uh, but perhaps for the benefit of the audience, the uh, interview of Q San Pan by the co-investigating judges on 13th of December 2007 this is contained in document number E3 slash 27. Uh, again, it is the four year honours. Um, I will just note the relevant ERNs and, and without actually reading any of this text. Uh, Khmer ERN 00156614, French ERN 00156666, and 00156743 for English. Um, it indicates this, it, this passage essentially indicates that. Uh, Pol Pot uh, was at the headquarters west of Udon together with Pol Pot immediately prior to the, um, uh, the fall of Phnom Penh and he indicates that Nguyen Chia may have also been there as well as a number of regional commanders. Um, another uh, passage in the same document um, is at Khmer ERN 00156615, French ERN 00156667-8, and English ERN 00156745. The reason uh, I make reference to this passage is because in response to a question by Judge Yu Bun Lang, whether between 1970 and 1975 he stayed permanently with the Khmer Rouge leaders, he says yes, because my role was to establish the liaison with the king. Um, in your honours, uh, I'm grateful for the extra time. Uh, with your leave, I will resume tomorrow. Uh, as I said, I have a, uh, a brief set of um, um, video extracts, which should not take more than 20 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank ກິດຈຳນາການສຳລັບການສໍາລັບថ្ងៃນີ້ຄືຖ້າສົມລະມົມໃນຊຸບສໍາລັບໃຫ້ ສຳລັບການເລືອກເຕືອບບັນໂຕຖືໃນປຶກໄຖສາຍໃນອັງກີຕະບູນໃຄກຸມພະຊະນາປີ